Ever since Red Skull pulled a glowing cube out of a church in Norway during Captain America the First Avenger, Earth's mightiest heroes have been on a long march to the final conflict with Thanos. With so much build-up and anticipation for Avengers Endgame, leaks and speculations are sure to follow. Marvel's notoriously tight-lipped, so impatient fans have to turn to the internet to get their rumors, and Redditor Trez80 maybe claims to have the plot that might be the real deal. To paraphrase Steve Rogers, if anyone wants to get out, now's the time to do it. We'll be exploring some potential spoilers for Endgame in this video, and by some, we mean the entire movie. Well, if the person who wrote this summary is right, that is. And that's a big if, which we'll get to. But even if they're partially right, there are spoilers ahead. If you want to wait until the movie is released, we understand. First, let's remember where we left off. Tony Stark was left on Titan with the dusted remains of most of the Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. <laughs> oh God, Peter. We didn't want you to go either, buddy. Tony's left alone with Space's own ball of anger, Nebula, the sister of Gamora and the adopted daughter of Thanos himself. Back on Earth in the land of Wakanda, the remaining Avengers had attempted to hold off Thanos and his Black Order long enough to separate and destroy the Mind Stone from Vision's head. Even with the timely entrance of Thor, Rocket, and Dean Groot, they were not successful. Thanos tore the Mind Stone from Vision's lifeless body, and with Stormbreaker firmly lodged in his chest, Thanos snapped half of all life out of existence. Meanwhile, Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man, he didn't pick the name is lost in the quantum realm while the first family of shrinking the Pims and Van Dynes turn to dust. Also dust in the wind is none other than Nick Fury and Maria Hill, but not before sending a page to Captain Marvel. From the trailers that have been released since, we know that Tony and Nebula are adrift in the Guardian spaceship, the Benatar, and the remaining Avengers are held up in the Avengers compound, clarifying that other people move on, but not them. So what does Endgame have in store? True to what the Russos have been saying, they can only show essentially the first 20 minutes of the near three-hour movie without giving everything away. So the first event that happens is, despite Stark's defeatism in the trailers, Stark and Nebula working their way back to Earth. Similar summaries that have given this one credibility hint that the answer comes in the form of Rocket's kleptomania. Fans will remember that in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the Guardians ended up in a spot of trouble after Rocket pockets a set of Anulax batteries the team was hired to protect by the Sovereign. Apparently, this might be the key to Tony and Nebula working their way back, with welding, of course. Back on Earth with the remaining Avengers gathered, we learned from the post credit scenes in Captain Marvel that they've rigged up Nick Fury's space pager in order to keep it sending. When it stops, Captain Marvel shows up looking for Fury. While the details are missing, we imagine that she doesn't take him not being there very well. Comic book tradition insists that when new heroes meet, they fight. However, it plays out that she eventually impresses the God of Thunder, which we saw at the end of the second trailer. With the spacefaring superhero who gave the Avengers their name on their side, the gathered Avengers head to Thanos' farm. The wounded Thanos and his broken gauntlet are no match for the now assembled Avengers and, with the added firepower of Captain Marvel, they defeat the Mad Titan. With the gauntlet damaged beyond repair, it's unable to undo the snap. In a callback to Tony Stark's conversation with Loki in the first Avengers movie, if they couldn't protect the Earth, they were able to avenge it. The dead Thanos heads to an afterlife where he meets the actual personification of death herself. Fans in the comics, or at least regular watchers of our videos, should know by now that in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, Thanos' motivation for snapping out half of life in the universe was to impress death. It was even alluded to in Thanos' first appearance in the MCU. When the other tells Thanos to attack Earth is to court death, Thanos gives a wry smile. This takes us into the second act of the film. According to Redditor Trez80 maybe, we jumped ahead a few years where Scott Lang has finally found his way out of the quantum realm to find half of everybody gone. Total bummer. He drives Lewis's van with the quantum tunnel to the Avengers compound, where he compels Cap to open the gate. There he meets Bruce Banner and explains the ins and outs of the quantum realm. While it's not something that Scott can explain in scientific terms, it's certainly something Bruce could figure out with the help of fellow science bro Tony Stark. Janet Van Dyne's last words to Lang were to watch out for time vortexes, which gives the science bros a plan, a time traveling plan. Stark whips up some of those sweet quantum suits we saw in the trailers, and they do the slow-mo right stuff walk into the quantum realm. Once there, they go on a nostalgia tour of the previous Infinity Saga movies, interacting with their past selves as they power up the Infinity Stones 
that had been drained in Thanos' snap and subsequent actions. We've seen hints of this with leaked set photos of the Battle of New York, except this time Ant-Man is actually there. Not only that, but Tony Stark is sporting shield duds instead of Iron Man armor. Presumably, they visit other parts of the saga to power up the stones. That'd mean revisiting the Dark World, where Malachite sought the Aether, or Reality Stone, Guardians of the Galaxy, where the Xandarians and Ronan the Accuser fought over the Power Stone, and Doctor Strange, where he discovered the Time Stone. There's no word on how they get to the Soul Stone, so there's still some mystery left in our lives. Back in the afterlife, where Thanos is honeymooning with death, celebrating a job well done, he notices what the Avengers are up to. He hits up his new girlfriend for the chance to return to life and stop the Avengers from undoing the damage he's done. After all, he does take pride in his work. Death lets Thanos make his way back to our realm to defend his snap, and we head into Act 3. Thanos gathers up whatever is left of his Outriders. Those are the multi-armed swarmy things that dash themselves against the shields of Wakanda. With his blood and dust to spare, he hits the Avengers HQ in an effort to stop the Avengers from finishing their plan. The plan is for Captain America, Tony Stark, and the Hulk to slip into the Quantum Realm and back to the Battle of Wakanda to use their newly powered stones to stop Thanos from ever snapping life out of existence. Unfortunately, they end up on Xandar, immediately after Thanos tore the place up looking for the Power Stone. Back on Xandar with Captain America, Iron Man, and the Hulk, they find that their gauntlet still isn't up to the task of defeating Thanos. The fight comes down to just Captain America and Thanos. Captain America is able to use the gauntlet one last time to assemble the Avengers. Like all of the Avengers. The whole lot. This is what we've been waiting for. All the Avengers and associates gathered to take on the Mad Titan in one epic battle. We just can't wait. Back in Wakanda in the original timeline, Thanos begins to notice that his gauntlet is starting to lose its lust after our heroes went through time, charging up the older stones with their younger selves. There, the original timeline Captain America is able to defeat the original timeline Thanos because his timeline has been altered since he was weakened at Xandar. In the process, unfortunately, the moment we've been dreading but knew was going to happen eventually comes. Captain America sacrifices himself. With Thanos defeated in Wakanda before the snap, the snap never happens. Now, of course, you're a hip audience. This isn't your first time travel rodeo. You know that inherent in any story involving time travel, there's the issue of the paradox. A paradox occurs when cause and effect end up getting turned on their heads. The paradox here is that, with the snap undone, everything that just happened also didn't happen. If Endgame didn't happen, then the snap happened. If the snap happens, then Endgame happens, which means that the time prevents the snap. Meaning, uh, okay, we'll say it again, time travel is super complicated. Fortunately, there's a guy who wears a time stone around his neck and likes explaining stuff. Doctor Strange explains that all the quantum strands have collapsed and the 14,605 possible futures have collapsed into this outcome. Essentially, our timeline now has a knot in it where the Avengers both die and don't die. Roll credits. Of course, we know that credits aren't the end of a Marvel movie. Our first end credit scene is Cap's funeral, where Tony says Steve was right as he leaves with Pepper and his new baby. Next up, the Bartons drop their kids off to be babysat by none other than Peter Parker himself. When they return, they find their youngins webbed against the wall fast asleep, and Peter saying, oh, wait, let me explain. But wait, there's more. For the final post credit scene, there's a man walking down the street, but all we see is the side of him and his arm. A pair of muggers approach and ask for his wallet, pulling out a gun. This is a superhero universe. You know this won't end well for the muggers. Out come a pair of familiar claws with a shriek, and we go to black. That's it. Of course, there's some mystery left, there are a few actors whose roles we don't know, and there's no word on what the arc is that sends Hawkeye to his Ronin personality. There's also a fair bit of skepticism regarding that final end credit scene. But the ink is barely dry on the Fox-Disney merger, and it seems a little early to decide what to do with all the properties returning to the Marvel fold. With so many questions and missing pieces, it's important to take anything of this nature with a giant ocean-sized grain of salt. Even if part of this leak is true, the rest could be very different, or even the whole thing could be different. The only way to know for sure is when Endgame hits theaters on April 26th. Until then, it's best to treat any leak as a fan theory. That's one version of the leak that's been making its way around the internet. How likely do you think it is? Does it meet your expectations? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, make sure to subscribe to CBR and ring that notification bell for more MCU videos. Thanks for watching.